Greetings, Minecrafters! Nonsanity here, and welcome to another episode of Avant 3 here on the FTOG server. As you can see behind me, I've got a few more names on the wall. We've got 120x1n, Mickey D276, I think we already had DX the God, and we have True Sandwich. Thanks, supporters! You guys are great. Thanks so much for helping out the channel and being a part. I'm glad I can put put you on display here in in some way. In exactly what way, I haven't quite decided. I was trying here with Yankee Vader, my first uh, sub, uh, supporter, uh, who pushed the button on my page to uh, send me a little bit of something as a thank you. I've got his uh, YouTube account image here, because maybe not everybody has a Minecraft head. I thought, you know, if they just have a YouTube channel, I can put it here, though I think most people who watch this play Minecraft. See, I have his name out here right now. So I can put the pictures up, or I can push the names up. I could even just mount the head so they're not rotating. I've got room for a few more. I don't know how many people are going to support the channel, but uh, there's still some room. I could stack more on top, or I can extend these and do the name and the picture and the head. Let me know what you think would be cool for displaying everybody in here. But uh, that's enough of the support talk. Let's uh, get started with what we're doing today. And the first thing to do is to show you something odd that's been happening around my base. I bet if we just go over here and... Ah! Did you see it? Did you see that? There were some blocks that just sort of popped up for a moment. It happens every few seconds. And which blocks they are tends to change. There! You saw them? I'm sure you saw them. Pause and go back if you didn't. I thought this was a visual glitch at first. But if I stand on the spot where one of the blocks is... Let's see if we wait to see where they are. Any moment now. I restarted Minecraft. I relogged first. That's the easy thing to test. Restarted Minecraft... I haven't rebooted my computer. Oh, there's one right there. So I'm going to stand right here where it is. Now, the server... It's actually looks like the block is moving up. There is a hole underneath. I can break it when it moves up. When this block... Oh, it, it shifted, I think. If the block breaks... If I break, break the block when it has moved up, then the server agrees that I've got the block. It goes in my inventory. There's a hole in the floor where the block used to be before it moved up. Even though I never broke that spot in the floor, I broke the spot above it. Which means the server agrees this is really happening. It's not some visual glitch. Oh, this It moved again. They tend to shift around a little bit, though they tend to be fairly regular in where they are. And I've seen them over here by the door and all the way over there. I haven't seen any on this side. <clears throat> but then I haven't stood over here. This is mainly be on this these two sections of the base. So something's going on. And I don't necessarily know what it is. Place isn't haunted. But it turns out it's not a bug. I had other people over here to look. They couldn't said they couldn't see the blocks move. Which made me think something very weird. Because if I'm the only one seeing it. But no. They could see it happen. They were just lying to me. This is a prank. Somewhere. Somehow. Somebody's got something in my base. That's causing these blocks to go up. I'm sure I can get them to tell me. They've they've let me in left me in the dark documenting my problems 
without ever letting on. So they'll probably tell me what, where the, the uh, mechanism that they're using to do this is. But uh, I'd rather try and find it myself. So excuse me while I do a little excavating. Well, uh, it's not at my base. Uh, turns out Toddy has it here at his. And uh, nope, I can't see you. <laughs> yeah, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to show me what he used to uh, do that effect of the uh, blocks popping up every now and then. And Toddy's back and looking marvelous. <laughs> I love, love what you've done with your hair. <laughs> yep. what, what, what is all that? Oh, Batania stuff. I want to just try out some of the cosmetic items. Oh, okay. Uh, the cloak is supposed to, like, reflect damage, and then there's, like, a death protection and uh, <laughs> explosion protection from the goggles. Oh, those are goggles. Yep. Uh, yeah. Look like a laurel. They are. I should give you a hearty a... handshake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so welcome to my secret lab. Come over here in this corner. You'll stand on a platform and then shift. Okay. <laughs> Sneaky. Yep. And a big dark All room. Right. Uh oh, I forgot. No uh, <laughs> night vision. That's okay. Out here. Light. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> That's better than my primitive torches. Bang, bang, bang. All right. Got some light. So... So here we are. I've got two different sets here so that they are not the same blocks each time. Um, oh, there's 16, I see. Yep, 16 all together. They run on 45 seconds each, but uh, staggering. So it's I guess you get it every 22 seconds. That makes not sense. Letting, is it not letting go? Hmm? No, yeah. I, I see. Okay. Uh, so then these uh, force relay blocks... Yep, you, uh, you picked some blocks to make move, I guess, huh? Yeah, you link them. Uh, they can only be moved with regular pistons, not the sticky pistons, so you have to have one on each side. And so that's what the delay is. One will push it one direction, and the other will push it the other direction. I see. And it only works with uh, non-tile entities. On these advanced redstone interfaces can be hooked to more than one block? Yep, if That's you nice. right if you right click it, it has a GUI. There's nine different locations you can. Oh, use. I see. That is very cool. That is so a that was, <laughs> nice that prank. Was it. <laughs> yep, you were doing your uh, Batania setup yesterday, and I was waiting the whole time while you were on for you to say something. Yeah, I mean, I th at first I thought it was just some sort of visu visual glitch because I had Minecraft running for a long time. It wasn't until one of them tripped while I was standing on it and I got a moment of suffocation. I realized this means the server understands that this block has just moved. Mm -hmm. And that got me really wondering what was going on. Yep. And then I, I can set up teleporters to your base and everything so I can get there <laughs> faster. <laughs> oh, I got my magnet on here. There you go. <laughs> All right. So this should be turned off now. Well, very cool and rather elaborate. <laughs> mm -hmm. What made you pick the All blocks right. that you did? <laughs> I've been thinking and thinking for uh, different ideas for uh, for you specifically because you like to do the subtle ones that you don't know that you're pranked. Yes. So I was trying to find blocks that um, I could do something with them or functional that uh, you can't like dig around and find it. So like a uh, entity detector wouldn't work because you would just dig down and find it. Uh, an invisible pressure plate wouldn't work because you would eventually locate the position. Yep. So I went with a random timer or almost random, seemingly random. Well, you got me because I haven't used the force block and I haven't used these uh, redstone interfaces. So I did not pick up on what was going on. Very good. <laughs> nice. Glad you liked it. Now I'll have to get you back. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, that was Toddy's prank, and it worked. 
I had no idea it was a prank. I even wrote a poem about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was kind of fun too, writing the response poems back to you. <laughs> All right. Well, back to Botania. All right. Have a good day. Thanks a lot, man. See ya. Bye. Okay. Back to work. Uh, the attentive one among you might have noticed that there was some more stuff built around the base uh, in the background, which is now gone. And that's because you're getting a sneak peek into how I get my videos set up. I do things once, I tear things down, and I put things back together again on camera for you guys. That way a lot of the decoration, which is not tedious, but takes a while, uh, it has been done. I mean, this was just repeating some of the same stuff I've done before. And just making sure everything works. But first, I want to talk about this guy, because there were some problems with it in the last episode that didn't come out in the video, because I hadn't discovered them yet. And that is involved with making the secondary runes that take runes as input. And the problem was, as soon as a rune hits the input chest here, which I changed to a crate so I can look inside it, otherwise with the block above it, I couldn't open the chest. But as soon as a recipe arrived with runes in it, they would get exported out, and they would, then the re recipe wouldn't fire off. So we had to make some changes in order to get that to work. What we need is the runes to stay until all the crafting is done. So we want to basically turn off this exporter uh, if there's anything in the chest. As soon as the chest is empty, that means all the items have been put into play. It's safe to return any extra runes, which would probably be inside this 1k storage uh, collecting. All the output, um, all the uh, additional runes, plus the runes don't get used up in the recipes, so they come back too. So I want everything to stick around until we're completely done. And so, I mean, we know with comparators, you can tell whether a container is empty or full or how full it is. So I want it to, if there's anything in it, output a redstone signal and have this guy would only work when there's no redstone signal coming to it. So I guess the question is how to get a comparator output from here over there without redesigning everything. And thanks to Toddy, I now know about this guy, the advanced redstone interface. It's got a position filter, which if we take it out and hold it, you can see there's the purple glow. That is the block that this position filter is linked to. And now whenever this block gets a redstone signal, it'll be transmitting it over here. And the trans redstone signal it gets is this comparator. I move the lever down to the side, and the comparator is just watching this uh, crate. If there's anything in it whatsoever, it lights up, and runes will no longer be exported. But as soon as it's empty, it starts emptying. Another thing is we don't want to pick up the runes right away because they need to be used for the recipes, but we don't want them to linger up there too long because then they'll get sucked into the table, even the output. So I replaced the item collector with the hopper hawk. Now this is a hopper hawk petite uh, with a mana pool nearby just because there happens to be one. I moved my spreader over here with this mana pool that spreader, ha oops, well, I'm holding it, that's fine. A potency velocity lens at the moment. And under the center pool of, well, under the corner pool, corner of the big pool of pools, I've got another one here, and this is the one that has the phantom and potency. So it's sending through all these blocks to this pool. And then this one shoots diagonally up between blocks, which doesn't require a phantom, and provides the power to the altar. This way, all the mana is all the mana spreaders for this are hidden, 
Though this pool gives off a little bit of blue particle effect that you can see from up above. That's okay. Anyway, to make the hopper hawk work, well, first to make the tiny hopper hawk, which reduces its range, because I didn't want it picking up, you know, stuff from other systems. The range by default is like six, and it gets boosted if there's a mana pool nearby. So it was way too powerful. But tossing the hopper hawk into a mana pool shrinks it. And then you can make a floating hopper hawk out of that. And now it's got a much limited range. I'm not sure what it is with the pool, but it's pretty close, pretty tight in. To control what it picks up, I don't want it to pick up the living rock, the last piece of the crafting. And so it is right-clicked with the wand in bind mode, not in bind mode, in uh, functional mode there. Right, uh, crouch right-click the air. And then you crouch right this, you can say pick up only items not in frames, pick up any items, pick up items in frames. And I want pick up only items not in frames. Now, there is two inventories next to it. This uh, mechanical user and this chest down here. The prismarine chest. The prismarine chest has an item frame with living rock, so it can't this hopper hawk cannot pick up living rock and put it in this chest. It could, however, put it in the mechanical user, so I just stuck a lot of alabaster in there. <laughs> so there's no room in there, so I can't put anything in there. So it's going to pick up, it's going to ignore the living rock, and because it's Botania's own flower, it will ignore things that are dropped for a few seconds, long enough for them to get sucked up by the altar, in which case they're protected. But it will grab the output of the altar before the altar sucks it up and put it in this chest, which then gets imported into storage and outported, outputted, outputted, output only when this is empty and all everything has been crafted. That works. So there are your changes. Uh, this cable here is just for the next piece because we want to automate the agglomeration plate up, up there. So, let's get this set up. It's not quite as picky. So, uh, it won't be so bad. Let's see now. We want to have... Let's get some blocks here. I want a space for the item collector, then the chest. I broke the item collector without always take the uh, filter out before you break the item collector or you lose the filter I always forget that but it destroys the filter when you do that well, I've got one here I'm gonna need another one I know right now because I forgot over here too so I'll toss one in there oh no, that's right this one had the hopper hawk that one's okay so put that back and this has rune in it we're going to change that to Terra Steel. Come on. There we go. A little bit of a delay. I wonder what Grok is doing. Because he's on. Yeah, he's on. Alright, so that's going to collect things. Um, we're going to want to have a crafter. And a phantom face. And I'm going to step down a little bit so I can get this aimed downwards. Oh, did it pick it up? It did pick it up. <laughs> and we're going to put another phantom connector underneath it. Let's get out the phantom linking tool. And I think these go over here. Yes. So let's go up. And we're going to put this up there. So there's plenty of space to drop. We're going to crouch right click with that. Crouch right click here. Notice this is a much simpler design. 
this doesn't require as much work to get working. So that is the input. And we need a piece of cable like that. So this is on the same network as our subnetwork over here. Which means its crafter is going to be powered. There's the recipe. In the same way. But it's not going to... I guess it is going to trigger, yes. So it needs a lever. That's right. So put a lever on there, turn it on. So now it's trying to craft Terra Steel. Here it is. From a Mana Steel ingot. Keep scrolling. Mana Diamond, Mana Pearl. And in this input crafter, I now have one for that as well. And that's on the main network. So the main network asks for Terra Steel. It'll put the items in here. They'll get sent to this crafter automatically because it's constantly trying to make it. As soon as the all the ingredients are there, it will send it into this guy, which sends it up to the automatic dropper. It drops, and now it just needs mana. And now that I've got... Well, you haven't seen it yet, but I, do, I did have the Elven Gateway turned on. That, would actually, that should, should probably have been next, but that's okay. <laughs> I used the Elven Gateway to make some sparks, spark augmentations. So let's hit this with a spark, and then hit the spark with a dominant augment. That means it's going to pull from those pools over there, which are just regular sparks. So it can draw power over here to this. Actually, it may not need that. Actually, I don't think it needs that for this guy. But then he's a little bit irregular in when it needs those and when it doesn't. This guy must have, like, suction, I think. But on mana pools, it would need a, a dominant, which we'll get to over there. So that's a spare dominant. Let me just put that away. Oh, where'd it go? It got sucked up because I didn't have the. Uh, yeah, I didn't put this in. So no, it didn't get sucked up. Oh no, it did get sucked up, but it got sent off into the system. So there should be a dominant spark in here now. No. Oh, that would be... It would stuck in here, because this only outputs the results. There it is. <laughs> so if you have Terra Steel's in there, it'll export the Terra Steel, because this is set to export Terra Steel. So once it gets collected, it'll get sent back into over here. Output, if that's empty. And that's it. That one's done. Let's give it a try. So we'll come over here and say... Oh, and... Uh, for me, Command Shift Click lets you uh, order things. Let's just do five. Start. That was fast. Is that it? Something happened. They're in there. So there's the f did one. Hmm, still thinks it's processing. That should have satisfied its recipe as soon as it hit the system. I'm going to make sure I didn't do something wrong. So I always test it on camera. <laughs> so if I did something wrong in this particular go-around, you get to see it. So toss that in. Why did that just go up? Wait, those are... How do I have five of each? Did I not put this in there? That's it. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> the Terra Steel ingot, when you have all these turned on, will also grab the Mana Pearl, Mana Steel, and Mana Diamond. 
So this was left on from the previous usage. Uh, I, th I forgot this wasn't a blank one. So you have to turn all this back to the defaults. Whitelist, ignore or dictionary, check metadata, check NBT. So now it's only Terra Steel that it will pick up. And I got to put it back inside too. Would help. And this can be reduced to like two is probably fine. Actually, one is probably fine. Just in a vertical column above it. All right, so let's just clear the system. Get all those out. Reset. Reset. Okay, put these in. We can order it from down here too. So let's get five. Start. Ah, sounds like it's working. There it goes. One, two, three. Zap. And it just sucks up power from all those guys. It goes really fast. I mean, each one of those takes, what, like a half a pool? And spread out among all of these, it barely made a dent. <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it up and call that one done. Seal it up there, and up oh, there. Look good. I think it works right in line with everything else. All right, so let's skip those for the moment and go over to this guy. And... Uh, Let's take this. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Project chest. <laughs> Let's do the top side first. Oh, I need that and that and that. Now, uh, the first time I built this, and let's go ahead and put it back together. There's the core. And the rest is just living wood. So the first time I built this, I just had some men in these pools that I beamed from. I had to, it took two uh, mana spreaders to get the mana down here. I could also use some of the tablet. I did use some of the tablets I've got to fill these two up. Uh, put the uh, use the terra steel to make these. Yeah, so I didn't, yeah, I did do this first. I'm doing them in the right order. Do this first with a regular spark. No augments needed. It'll suck. The mana. Use that to make the terra steel, and then you use the terra steel to make these two pylons. And they don't have to be in this position anymore. They can be anywhere in 11 by 11 area around this block. Excuse me. Let's put this in place. Boop. Uh, did I get the right one? Redstone mode deactivation. No. That is not right. Give me a redstone torch. Redstone torch. Why can't I see it? There they are. Whack it with a torch. Pulse. I guess it is deactivation. Redstone will just stop it from working. Normally it'll just keep running. That's what I want. That's what I want. Go away. And we'll need you in a moment. In fact, we'll go ahead and crouch right click, store it in the connector. But anyway, yeah, with these two pools here, we could just activate it and use it manually. Bang. I put the green panels on the back just to give it an enhanced green look and then covered it up with decorative panels to make it look like everything else. So that sucks some power up from these two pools. And uh, now I'll stay open. Use that to get the uh, the pixie dust and the other things that you can get by tossing items in there. That let me make the augments. And I made all these pools down here, put regular sparks on them, then all these pools up here, they have sparks with the recessive. It's a recessive. I forget what the name is. 
bark. Yeah, recessive and dominant. These are all have recessive on them, so they give their mana down to the pools below, which is why they're pretty much empty. In fact, I can go ahead and over here and uh, click that. Oh, that's right, I don't have the script. Oh, I do have the script in place. I must have used up all the coal that I had in the system. Let's go dump some more in there. Top off the mana storage. What's going on here? Oh, that's right. It goes into the other machine, so I'll just put it in here. I need to clean the way that works up. Anyway, that'll start. I'll give it a manual go. And I'll reset it. So the timer's reset. All right. Anyway, back to this. So now that we've got the sparks, we can do things with them. We can hit these pools with sparks. And I'm not sure I can hit it with the... i got to break the... There we go. This is the dom dominant spark, so this is going to be pulling mana over here. There we go. To keep these pools fed, it'll suck mana over whenever it's necessary. And now, since we have the uh, dropper up there, let's hook that up to make everything automatic. Because I like things to be automatic. So we're going to start with the phantom face connected crouch right click connection is obstructed it is either not in range not in a letter chunks or not the right type of block for this phantom device uh, it was working before <laughs> can I get in here block store to this connector it may have changed since I recorded it there we go now Look away. Let's place it down again. There we go. Now it's working. Not sure what had happened before, but now it's working. So, let's uh, place this crafter looking down. And a chest on top. And an item collector. Again, which I broke uh, without fixing the, uh, the pattern. Without taking out the recipe. Filter. I'll get the right word. Okay, that's all activated. Let's put the three recipes in there. And now let's fix the filter. Since I have some of these on hand, having run it manually first, get a filter and these three are used. And I'll leave them exact because I'm not sure how they match up with some of the input ingredients. This is, elementium is probably the same as mana steel, so since i got to be able to toss mana steel in there, don't want it to be or dictionary Okay, put this in. Let's reduce the range a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure what its throw pattern is like. That's it for that. seal up the floor and now that should be automated let's give it a try let's see let's get some some more elementium get 10 elementium start up oh, my magnet's getting some of it <laughs> that worked now we've got more Elementium. Yep, 21 now. Alright. 
one more down. Three left to go. So what do we got over here? Three different colors. You can hit a mana pool with a die, and it will change its color. It doesn't do anything to its functionality. It's just a regular mana pool. But I've colored them so I know what's under them. And this one, it's just a basic mana pool. There's nothing going on here. Some things you can toss into a mana pool and change them. And that's what this one's for. Underneath this one is the catalyst. The alchemy catalyst, I think. Alchemy catalyst, yep. And under this one is the conjuration catalyst. So, let's automate those. They're going to be pretty simple. Again, like the agglomeration plate, we're just going to tack them on to this guy. Actually, no, we're tacking them on. This is going to be different. They're going to be tacked on to the main network. They don't need any sort of sub-network stuff. But actually, I wanted to make a proper stand for them. Let's get out um, one, two, and three. Or maybe I should put them together. That'd be interesting. Yeah, let's try it like that. And do a little bit of chisel and bidding here. Get the chisel. It's going to break soon. Put that back. And I just want to do... Nope, not there. Okay, like that. Extended. Yeah, this floor is down one. As you can see, you can see on the edge of the wall there, it's the recessed down one. So these blocks are actually floating one little bit up. <laughs> Let's, uh, boom. little bit. Some more line. I forget how tall I made these strips. Whoops, undo. The one problem about having my whole base based on daylight is it does get dark for a moment. <laughs> I can live with it, but... So these were three high. Oh, you know what? I'm doing it the hard way. Drawn region. Grab there. Come over here. Done. Grab here. Come over here. Done. There. <laughs> That's the easy way to do it. Oh, and then the uh, the upper section, which again to do with the drawn region. Like that. There we go. Nice little platform to build my stuff on. And now put away the chisel and bit stuff. All right, stuff. Gonna do all these. We'll come back for the patterns afterwards. So first, we're gonna have three of these guys. So let's link them up. Where's the hole? Here's the hole. Let's make a new hole over here. So that can be that's going to the pools. There we go. So we have droppers. We're gonna have one, two, three. And we're gonna right click that one. It'll be the first. Shift right click that one. Second. And the third. Not necessarily in that order. All right, now we're going to have a crafter on top of each one. Like so. And let's see here. How do I want to do this? Let's break that. Let's 
So I want the chest to be there, the input port to be there, and then the hopper hawk will be right there. And that is another one of the tiny ones. Don't know if it's close enough to the mana pool. Come on, get out. Oh yeah, there's a mana pool right above it. So it, it, it is going to be boosted a little bit. So I think that can reach to all three of them. Anything it picks up, we'll put into the chest. Now, there should be enough of a delay for things to drop and in, into the pools. The only problem might be, and I haven't really tested it, is if they make a big enough order, it's going to pick up some of the stuff before it's been processed. So that is a slight problem. If it is, we'll turn this back into a item collector and give it specific filters for the specific items we want to pick up. All right, so what programs do I have for these guys? These I'll have to make one of because they're on the main network. These three are in the basic pool. Uh, ice is, I think, in this one. I think name, the name tags are too. Let's double check. Uh, if you, and it's keyed to L for me, I hit L accidentally and saw this. Uh, I think any of the manuals that are made with what, the Enchirion mod can all be put into here. And the Botania is one of them. So it's a way to keep your books. I wish it worked with all manuals, whether they were made with Enchirion or not. But, uh, let's see here. Name tags. Let's go to index. Yep, it's the alchemy. Yeah, snow and ice. I wanted to make that so we can have ice if we need it. And book and quill into name tag. So they go into that one. This one I haven't made any patterns for. It mainly just duplicates stuff. Uh, that's definitely one where this is the best way to suck it up because, you know, it's just going to reuse. It's going to The output is the same as the input. So if I used a regular item collector with that, it'd be a problem. This is probably the best we can do right now. Just don't make super big orders. <laughs> and that should now be working. Let's... Uh, Go seal everything up. So I got these one, two, three, and the screens. Oh, oh, there's one more thing we need. And that is we gotta get men into these pools. And that's when the sparks come back into play. So let's put a spark on each one. Now these normally will not suck from over here because they're just attached to pools and unlike the agglomeration plate, they don't have any suction for lack of a better word. So we do put dominant sparks on them. I missed that one. There we go. So now they will suck it up from these guys. Suck it up. Two, three. And they are complete. And let's patch the hole in the floor before someone falls to their injury. Uh, he says as he walks to another hole. All right. Uh, so now we can make more mana steel. Let's make ten. Start. And there it goes. I think maybe the dropper will be slowing things down enough that... They'll never get a buildup of materials. So it may be okay. If not, I can switch it to be the open crate, and that'll really slow it down so that the uh, Hopper Hawk never picks any of it up. 
That's probably the best idea. I don't have any of the... Do I have any of the uh, book and quills? I don't think so. Or snow. I do have some snow. So let's order some ice. Three ice. Poof, poof, poof. There it went. <laughs> okay. These are all automated. That is the, the Pure Daisy, the Petal Apothecary, Regular Mana Pool, Alchemy Catalyst Pool, Conjuration Catalyst Pool, the Runic Altar, the Agglomeration Plate, and the Elven Portal. Take me away. Are all now automated using RF tools primarily. Not RF tools. Excuse me. Refined storage. Refined storage. <laughs> now the only thing I want to do still to what you see here is change this. Yeah, sometimes some of these... I don't think some of these are correctly linked anymore because they're not sucking up all of the fuel. I'll have to go around and check them all to make sure they are all linked. But I wanted to completely change this arrangement up here and even change what's driving the drops um, instead of using the RF tools. I mean, I like this display. But it's more complicated than it needs to be for just a timer, basically. Especially a timer that I want to turn on and off. And I think I can pack more of these flowers up here in a more aesthetically pleasing way and a more efficient way and have everything go into a single pool that then that can be drawn down here. So one recessive pool at the top accepting all the mana and sending it down there, or maybe even into two layers. Because that would let me put a comparator on the one pool and stop everything when that one pool is full, which means all the ones below are full as well. So expect that next time. And then we'll maybe fight some Gaia. I, I've got some ideas I want to try. To see if I can hack the Gaia battles a little bit. And I think we'll wrap it up here. The music and the playing in the background didn't give it away. Thanks to all my new... Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> this is now the Museum of Interesting People. And... Uh, or did I show that already? Maybe I didn't show that. I did show the two new names, didn't I? True Sandwich. Sandwich. Sorry. And uh, DX the God. Two more uh, supporters to the channel. Thank you very much, guys. Along with the other three. And I'm sure there's going to be more. I've got it decked out and ready to go. If there's more than 16 of you in the future, then uh, I may have to make these double-deckers. But yeah, that, that's all you need to do to be in the Museum of Interesting People. You know, actually, I'll probably just start moving heads up and just have the latest 16 down with their names shown. But I'll keep everybody's heads in the room. Oh, there's plenty of room, even if I have to decorate the ceiling. <laughs> Museum of Interesting People. That came out rather nice. So until next time, now we've got the music. <laughs> I should learn never say anything about the music, because it might not be time for it. Until we meet again, this is Nonsanity, signing out. Take care, be good, and see you next time.